the holy grail of reuse. I've been working on reuse of content since 1981 before I started doing curriculum architecture design projects. So it's a major driver of me. The tool set that I use includes the five-tier inventory structure of content, part of an enterprise content architecture, and with the concept of maps and lessons and instructional activities. Reuse, unfortunately, was driven into a ditch with the concept of the reusable learning object, an intact course or lesson that was itself not a modular in its own design. That's where I differ. My lessons are comprised of modules, which are in fact the instructional activities, which themselves can be looked at as modules, as elements, as components. There may be pictures and diagrams that are reused over and over again in multiple instructional activities, therefore in multiple lessons, and perhaps even in multiple events. So it's all about these objects and how we classify them. For example, these instructional activities, the how-to, complete a travel and expense report, what tier would that go into? the design of that content or the actual content after it's produced. Where would we have stored that so that somebody can find that later on? Because completing a travel expense report is something that many different jobs inside an enterprise might require. How to evaluate a training program, however, is quite unique to some jobs and that's not shareable. So as where the first how-to would be in Tier 4 shareable performance how-to's, the how to evaluate a training program might be unique to one job and therefore it would reside in Tier 5, a unique performance how-to. Active listening, good since the days of Socrates, just avoid that hemlock stuff, uh, is an enabling knowledge and skill and therefore you would find that content in Tier 3. An overview of instructional design, if you thought of that as the tasks and outputs of instructional design, would be found in Tier 2 of the Enterprise Content Architecture and the five-tier inventory structure. Welcome to the ABC Business Unit is something that you would find in Tier 1, part of the organizational orientations of the PAC processes. Do you agree? Let's look at some other content. Spreadsheets. Generic spreadsheet training. Spreadsheets which would be necessary to how to complete a travel expense report, depending on the tool that's used to complete an expense report, would be in a, a generic enabler. And that would be found in Tier 3. Statistics which would be used in evaluating a training program would be a tier three set of content shareable with many different terminal performance sets of content. Handling complaints is something that many jobs in an enterprise might have to do. Ask every manager if they have to handle complaints, not just the people at the complaint window. That content would be in Tier 3. Active listening and handling complaints are enabling content that would allow somebody to do the terminal performance of their job. Writing instructional objectives is unique to instructional designers and therefore would be part of a Tier 5 set of how-to content. And welcome to the ABC Business Unit is a Tier 1 organizational orientation. I hope this has been helpful. How that would play out in a lesson map for handling XYZ in your job with learning objectives, which is given ABC, you're able to do XYZ as measured by 1, 2, 3, under both sunny skies and torrential rain conditions. There would always be an open and a close. 
where in the open is an advanced organizer that demystifies and lays out how we're going to get through this particular lesson. What's the point? How does this connect to the things previous? How does this connect to things downstream in the learning? As well as the close, which summarizes this. If you think of the old saw of, in presentations, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. The open is tell them what you're going to tell them, and the close is tell them what you told them. Then the rest of the content in between those two elements are the tell them. In this case, perhaps there's information now on generic XY, which would come from Tier 3. Then there's specific XY, which is in your job context, learner. This is how that plays out. So there's a generic part of XY and a specific part of XY. If you thought of active listening, there's active listening, generic content, good for everybody. But then how it plays out in the XYZ performance might be slightly different, might be nuanced. This is how, where, how we cover that. The next thing then is a demonstration of how that XY plays out in the specific context of this particular learner. So this is what XY looks like. And we can demonstrate it. We can do a slow motion demonstration on video and point out the various nuanced portions of this because that's what the learner needs to learn. That's what they need to master. And then we can have an application exercise, an authentic application exercise, that is replicable of their real-world performance requirements, their job tasks, producing the outputs that they produce, and we can have an application exercise on that. But wait a minute, this only covers X and Y out of the handling X, Y, Z. So we need to now add in the generic components, if there are such, for the Z portion of this, and then again talk about how Z factors into X and Y and becomes X, Y, Z, and we can demonstrate that through slow motion video or role plays up at the front of the room with actors who know what they're doing, etc. And then we can do an application exercise of how to do X, Y, Z. But wait, maybe that was just under the sunny skies condition. And we need to add another exercise where we throw in all the real world complexity and all the real difficulty there and have an exercise that follows on doing specific XYZ in the pouring rain. And then it's time to close the lesson out, reflect on what we've learned, how this fits into the bigger picture, what this then leads to next in the learning continuum. So the five-tier inventory structure contains both generic content and specific content, active listening, and the generics of active listening, and active listening in your job where you have to do interviews of subject matter experts and master performance and clients, and it's very different than everybody else's specific application of active listening, as one example. But we also might have then specific active listening for one particular job, the original content, and then somebody might come along next month or next year and create another derivative of that active listening because they're doing something very close to what our first learner's application was, but there are some different nuances that we need to change, and so now we can create a derivative of that. Maybe it only needs a 5% tweak from that original specific content, 5% difference and now we've got exactly what that next learner population needs. So our inventory of content needs to account for all of these types of content, the generic stuff, the generic stuff made specific, and the different variations of specific content. Active listening is not active listening for every job in the corporation. However, almost all jobs, if not all jobs, require active listening. The performance context is different. The PAC processes have been doing this for clients since the early 1980s. 
Reuse of content is not a theory. It has been proven time and time again. But why bother with all of this? Well, for the return on investment. Research shows that only 5 to 15 percent of the population can learn out of context and apply to another context. So if you teach me active listening and it's not authentic enough to my specific application, the chances are I will not be able to learn it in your learning experience and then apply it on their job. I may master level two learning objectives, but it may never transfer and we'll determine that if we measure level three, does it transfer to the job. The way to ensure higher levels of transfer to the job is to make sure that what we teach, we teach in an authentic manner for the ROI. But there, wait, there's more. 